there we go. <laughs> Sorry, I'm I I sunk Atlantis. I don't know what I'm doing with technology. <laughs> Tell me your name again. Sorry. No, or Chris. 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 Awesome. Hi, Lala. How are you? Um, <laughs> so <laughs> she apparently wants to say hi. So hi. So uh, you um, are the um, fortunate or unfortunate <laughs> recipient of my trying to change up my usual tactics because normally I don't like to do interviews yeah <laughs> I find it awful talking about myself so I did um I did get a list of questions for you <laughs> so um so help me out I don't know you so paint me a picture where what's what's your life like where where are you what's going on how many people in your family <laughs> oh well I'm <laughs> I'm just outside of Minneapolis and I'm I've been doing interviews since uh fall 2020 mostly with voice actors but I've also done um like Leah Thompson and Rosanna Arquette and uh I kind of well, yeah I mostly focus on voice actors but I also do like music industry people and people that do live action and uh yeah nice yeah so so what's the juice what do you look for when you interview people like what, what's the, what's the thrill? Well, primarily um, a lot of people I interview uh, work in anime. That's kind of like my favorite thing. <laughs> That's your thing. Yeah. Uh-huh. So Black Lagoon, huh? Yeah. Black Lagoon. Have you had Marika on the? No, I haven't talked to her yet. On the chat yet? She, it's, it's so funny because she's, um, She's like the nicest person you're ever going to meet. And, and uh, <laughs> she's so unlike Revy, although yeah. she does, she does, um, she says she has a dark side. I mean, everybody does have a dark side, but hers is less apparent than almost everybody you'll ever, <laughs> ever meet. <laughs> so, well, yeah. um, in terms of other um, Vancouver voice actors, I've had uh, Kiara Zani, Michael Adam Thwaite, uh, Ellen Kennedy. Um, right. People like that. Awesome. It, it won't only, only focus on Black Lagoon. I can talk about other things in your career as well. Oh yeah. Um. What? Whatever. I mean, if I get bored, I'm just going to go to my list and I'll start asking <laughs> you questions. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> well, the first thing I wanted to ask was, um, did everything start from playing a Tiny Tim in A Christmas Carol? <laughs> wow. Uh, where in the world did you get that? <laughs> uh, yeah, that was a. <laughs> convent of the sacred heart in halifax nova scotia playing tiny the tiny tim yeah in the christmas carol yeah that was early uh that was early me yes um don't know if there's too much to say about it <laughs> i uh i had a crutch and a limp and an accent mm -hmm. um and uh i like to do an accent was that a was that your first professional theater job too, or? No, it wasn't professional. It was just uh, just a bunch of girls on stage. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, they used to do plays. You know, it, 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 all girl plays. The Sound of Music had a Captain Von Trapp who was a girl. <laughs> oh. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. What would well would the first professional one be? A uh, Jungle of Cities. No, um, no, that was, uh, wait now, is that a Brecht? It might have been, it might have been, although I did do, um, I did do, um, like summer theater and stuff when I was going through university and I got ignominiously fired after I threw a cup of coffee at a coworker. <laughs> 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 yeah I came in when I was but it's funny because uh the other day that I went into work and everyone was talking about Will Smith um and uh my reaction to Will Smith was I actually felt bad for him like I I mean I think Chris Rock did really you know he was really great and everything but I I felt bad for Will Smith because how many times have you just 
done something, well, maybe not you, but me, I've done things without thinking like my mouth has got there before my brain has got there. Yeah. And then to have that in front of millions of people, blah, you know, awful. But anyway, uh, but I was thinking about that because that was one of those kind of incidents. I came in, this guy was talking about me and it sounded like he was talking smack, but I didn't really listen hard. I just, and I had a cup of hot coffee in my hand and I just chucked it at him <laughs> and I got fired. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Well, I know you said you have on written on your website too, that uh, when you were working as a waitress in Halifax, that a, like a old time actor tipped you $200. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, Kit Carson. Oh. Um, yeah. Tipped me, tipped me $200. Yeah. I don't know. I don't know that he's, he's probably not still living. Mm-hmm. Although I shouldn't say that, but it was in the eighties, so you know. Yeah. And what was the uh, was Ewoks? What got you into Actra? Um, no, because before that, I was doing a lot of radio drama because okay. they they used to do they used to do tons of radio drama in Canada. It was really good with the CBC. They don't really do it anymore. Um in vancouver was a couple of years ago maybe 10 years ago i was there when they dismantled their big foley the rooms with the doors that you slam and the you know the the beautiful um they had like baths and things you know to run taps and shower curtains and drawers full of cutlery and things like that so you could and you would do you know walking into you know walking and that there was a a, uh, a dead room so it sounded like you're outside and it was it was very cool working in there but yeah it's gone now it's too bad it's so good I know there was uh, some initial aspiration too to move to LA yes yes and then I just chickened out <laughs> I was like people are shooty over there <laughs> and I uh I got a little I got a little intimidated it's a very I mean it is a very very different culture the, um, the U.S. and in, in Canada, and or at least seemed to me, and where I grew up was um, so small. Like the um, even though going to you know university in Halifax, and I still am a bit of a small towner mind. You know, I prefer prefer the the quieter life. <laughs> Are you also part of SAG though, or? Um, no, except to the extent that there's a reciprocal agreement between the two unions. Yeah. So, yeah. But I don't, yeah. I don't even know how that works, but something like that. Mm -hmm. And in terms of on camera, um, was uh, Night Heat the first experience you had? (laughs) (laughs) Um, was it? I don't know. No, I think there were a couple of CBC shows before that. Um, street legal, stuff like that. <laughs> Weird things. Yeah, but Night Heat, um, that was a that was a thing. <laughs> shooty shooty. Justin, do you know who Justin Lewis is? Yeah. That was me. That was who I had all my scenes with, was Justin Lewis. Well, around that same time, too, you had a really um, stacked cast movie with uh, Where the Heart Is. Yeah, I don't remember that at all. Oh. <laughs> I told you this is going to be difficult trying to remember. Here, let me I'll ask you a question. Have you ever been abducted by aliens? <laughs> no. Have you ever seen a ghost? <laughs> no, but I do, but I do believe in that stuff, though. Do you? Do you? Do I? I don't know if believe is the word, but I live it. <laughs> yeah. So, yeah. Yeah. Okay. So there's that question. Um, so uh, <clears throat> describe your family. <laughs> well, I'm a, I'm the only child. It's just me and um, my mom and dad. Wow. Only children. It's a very interesting thing. It's a very different psyche, isn't it? Like then yeah. people who have families, it's a very kind of, mm-hmm. yeah, yeah, yeah. You have, you have siblings? Do I have siblings? Well, um, in a sense, uh, my, all my family are adopted. Okay. And uh, we, t- we don't know each other very well. 
but yes, there are some, uh, and I'm not in contact with them anymore. Okay. Once my parents popped off, we were, we weren't, we didn't stay in touch. So, but yes, I have a, I have a brother in, I think New York and a sister in, I think Connecticut. Oh. <laughs> What a what a, an inspired your name change. My name change. Uh, okay, well, my mother had named me after a pope. Uh, or my parents had named me after a pope, Pope Paul something. And uh, it's just not really a vibe that I'm uh, resonant with. Let's just say. <laughs> so. Uh, <laughs> so because that given that was the, the reasoning the logic i mean i don't know would you change your name if if you, you could just legally go and uh have a name change mm, i think i'm pretty content with it i mean the only thing is that people tend to mispronounce my last name a lot but which is what mayak mayak is it polish it's czech it's czech oh do you yeah. speak czech no <laughs> no <laughs> That's cool though. If you're an animal, what animal would you be? Oh, probably a red panda. A red panda? Holy shit specific. <laughs> That's my that favorite. Yeah. Because of, of the movie that just came out or because of red panda, red pandas? Just red pandas, yeah. They've always probably been my single favorite animal. Oh my god, they're so cute. Yeah. <laughs> they're so cute. Wow. Okay. Well, if I was an animal, I think I would be a bat because oh. everything is about sonar for me oh, okay yes um you know i actually understand things in relief of sound mm -hmm. i learn things by a sound or a whale maybe because you know and if there's a lot of sound i get jumbled <laughs> <laughs> well it is interesting then considering um all the experience with theater that you had and like winning awards and yeah yeah well i know um theaters theaters kind of got a um a sense of enclosure to it mm -hmm. you know because you're you're well there's the dividing line but it's the dark and the light of it you know the audience is in the dark you know they're there um but it, it's a bit of a dream life that you're in so uh, you know i like the fishbowlness of it and I like the fishbowlness of cartoons. Mm -hmm. And I really dislike the confusion of um, being on set and just all the stuff that's going on, all the stuff that's out of your purview and all the lack of focus until it's now you focus, then you're like, oh, shit. <laughs> yeah. Also, did the um, on camera products that you've been in, did those come to you or did you seek those out? Uh, I, I, at, um, when I was younger, I uh, was auditioning for stuff on camera. I kind of more or less let it go when I came to Vancouver, because I was doing just so much animation that, um, I didn't really have the time to do it. And it's, uh, it's not as interesting to me and, uh, the kinds of roles that were available to me weren't that interesting mm -hmm. um you know it's always being the mother of someone who died or you know that kind of thing that 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 i was up for or nurses and stuff like that and i was like mm, i don't need to play it i'm not going to get any juice out of it so mm -hmm. i'm good to not be on camera <laughs> was it a more fun experience though with uh, like supernatural and uh, da vinci um Supernatural, uh, I mean, it was just a day player, which is a very specific type of experience as well. Um, but it was interesting to see the people. Um, and they were very, um, I mean, they're, they were very comfortable. They've been there for a number of seasons, as you all know. I got their names wrong, Jared and, and the other one. Um, yeah, I couldn't tell which one was which. And so I was continuously being told it's the other one. <laughs> Okay. <laughs> uh, yeah, yeah, but uh, it was fun. Mm -hmm. Simple. Do you remember what your first um anime was? Shoot, I couldn't tell you. 
There's been quite a few of them. Um, yeah, no. Sorry, I couldn't couldn't tell you. Would would a Dragon Ball Z be pretty early? It was pretty early, but then there was a great big pause in it, and then we came back and did a whole bunch more episodes. Mm -hmm. That was a really tough one because it's just like a nonstop screaming the situation. Yeah. It was basically. <laughs> yeah so that was yeah playing go tanks a lot of screaming and it was a it was a um you couldn't kind of fake it out so you screamed at the higher part of your voice so she's like no you need blood we need we need to hear the the, the stress and tension in your throat mm -hmm. i have found that um talking to other voice actresses that do boy voices that they all kind of have their own process for it is there something that you do specifically I uh, no. Uh, wash my cat with my own tongue every morning. <laughs> no, um, <laughs> no, really, there isn't. Okay. There isn't because there isn't. In, there is no. Um, there's no way around it. If to, if you want to get the sound of like ah, like to get some gravel, there's no way around it. You just kind of have to hurt yourself. You can't gracefully open your throat and get there. Mm -hmm. So it's going to wear and tear. And considering um, your experience in voiceover uh, when you started doing anime, did you, did you take the dubbing easier? Uh, I'm, I'm good at it because I'm fast at reading okay. and uh, at seeing that. Um, and there are different ways that people do it. Sometimes the, the text runs along the bottom of the screen. And sometimes you just have the pages and you hear three beeps and then you read your line. Mm -hmm. um, but uh, I'm fortunate in that I see really quickly and read really quickly so so that's a great grace because people who have trouble with that have trouble with doing an anime mm -hmm. i think the first um voice that a character that you did that instilled your voice in my head was pashmina and Antara. <laughs> oh my god i remember when my parents were still alive and i was i was down at their house in florida and i was trying to it was on, um, Hamtaro was on, and I kept going, that's me, that's me, <laughs> that's me, I was trying to tell them, and then there were all group lines, everybody going, bada, 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 thank you. <laughs> that seems like it's kind of more just like an effective version of your natural voice. Um, I think she has a bit more, she's a bit, she's a bit tinier, right? I can't actually remember what she sounded like, but I think it was pretty small. She was a pretty small character, but she was very um, delicate and mm. sweet. <laughs> is there, uh, what, the different characters you played in um, Inuyasha, is there one that stands out from your memory? Don't remember it at all. Here, <laughs> I'll ask you a question. Um, <laughs> if you were going to an island for the rest of your life, you got to take five things, what would you take? Oh, jeez. Um... I guess one of my, or yeah, one of my favorite books, uh, five things is hard. Um, okay, say you got one thing. I don't know, I guess, I mean, my, my, uh, my main hobby outside of interviews is collecting um, animation cells. So okay. probably my collection of those for, yeah, I've been collecting those from anime for, um, over 10 years now oh wow yeah. so you build your hut out of those anime cells yeah <laughs> <laughs> keep you warm sleeping with anime cells <laughs> yeah <laughs> anime cell hat <laughs> anime cell coat <laughs> what about well i know um there's probably more affinity with you with um gundam seed with flake yeah yeah i like that character a lot i did really like that character a lot she was like nuts and uh <laughs> and um james corrigal i'm sure you know who that is right she she did interview him he's actually a huge nerd okay. and <laughs> and he's really really he remembers it all and um but anyway he's a very very good director uh, yeah i like that it was good uh took some unexpected turns i didn't expect to be floating in space at the end of it but 
we'll all be floating in space by the end of things. <laughs> <laughs> was um was Harrow just given to you or did you have to audition for him too? I don't think I had to audition. I I think uh, I think they just gave that to me. It was a gift that kept on giving. Hello. <laughs> <laughs> <I don't. laughs> yeah. It's kind of a similar voice with the um the Tachi comas and the ghost in the shell. Yeah, yeah, a little bit. Yes, gosh, there are a lot of those guys too. Ghost in shell. There was some nice stuff in that. I didn't just play the the Tachikomas. Uh can't remember what else, but I remember there was something else. <laughs> <laughs> and then with the uh, galaxy angel that's a fun character too don't remember it okay <laughs> <laughs> oh uh shauna shaka kano shauna oh yeah uh uh it was really fun and then the second season she went kind of the character just was it seemed like it was written by about five more other different people who'd never seen the show Mm -hmm. in the second season but the first season was very cogent and cool mm -hmm. did you like that one yeah that's a cool one yeah 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 she's good shut up shut up shut up <laughs> you have a cool character with a death note too uh naomi misura yeah she's good she was very uh taciturn tragic mm -hmm. Yeah, poor old girl. Ah, you know. That's what happens when somebody writes your name in a book. Mm -hmm. Do you think you have a personal preference for um, playing like darker dramatic characters over comedic? I think I like to watch them more. I'm more interested in watching them than I am in comedic stuff. I like playing comedic stuff. I like being an, an idiot. It suits me nicely. Um... But I like a bit of a mix in the in in viewing stuff personally, mm -hmm. yeah. And I like the stuff that's kind of more magicy kind of thing, you know, which I don't seem to really get. I get much more idiot roles, or you know, like big dummies or self-absorbed characters and stuff. Mm -hmm. yeah. Well, I would think one of the I like craziest fun anime that you got to do was the the Powerpuff Girls Z. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Yes. Uh, oh, what was the the amoeba? The amoeba gang. Yep. The amoeba gang. Yes, I like that lady with her giant hat. And you got to play the uh, the teacher too, Miss Keen. Miss Keen, right? <laughs> <laughs> Thank you for jogging my memory. It's only slightly jogged, though. I. It's funny, you know, because I I just literally, I. I just do them and go and forget, right? Mm -hmm. <laughs> but I never, so I never actually watch the stuff that I've done or very rarely afterwards. Oh, okay. Yeah. <laughs> so you're going to know more about it than I will, I'm afraid. <laughs> well, I would think um, with a character like uh, 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 Roberta would stand out more with how multifaceted she is and everything. Yeah, yeah. I wanted to play her with a Spanish accent, which of course would now not be acceptable. But uh, I'm kind of glad. So now <laughs> that it's not that I didn't. Mm -hmm. um, yeah. Interesting character. I love the animation in that. Mm -hmm. Very good. It's very beautiful. Was that just um, with Black Lagoon? Was that just kind of more like a general audition? Probably. <laughs> I think so. I don't remember. I don't remember getting it. Again, it's another thing is when I do auditions, I never look back because, you know, it's one of those things after years of being an actor, you can make yourself a crazy person if you wonder if you got it or, you know, whatever. So I kind of trained myself out of the habit of ever looking back, just do an audition and forget it, forget it, forget it. If you get a call the next week, great. If you don't, also great because you're forgotten. <laughs> well, I know you said before too that um, if you saw the script for her script for her story arc, that you wouldn't have done it because of the content. Oh, uh, was that Roberta? 
uh, it's might have been, yeah, possibly. I don't know. I can't actually remember the story, so I can't tell you what. I know. I mean, I, sh I know she was shooty shooty, which I don't particularly <laughs> object to, but some of the um, uh, the creepier sex stuff in some of the animation stuff um, just disturbs me. So, <laughs> so I would prefer not to 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 do it. So, mm. um, and I did. There were a couple that I did actually recuse myself from for that reason. Okay. Yeah. Well, with with her story, um, her yeah, her psyche kind of snaps, and then she gets really dedicated to um, protecting the little boy Garcia that Kathy Westluck plays. Right. And then she yeah kills a lot of people, and um, it's so interesting that I mean, there's there's one scene where her her other maid servant Fabiola, who Shannon Kent played, um, there's a scene with in that where uh, she's confronting Roberta and is like, hey, like, we got to get you back to, um, like, help you out here. And then um, she's, Roberta's so in her mind that she's like, oh, did you, like, clean up the living room? I'm going to go fetch the young master and bring him out of the rain. And, and she's all covered in blood and she doesn't even, like, realize anything. And I just thought that everything you did with Roberta was so incredible. Oh, gosh, thank you. I'm really sorry that I can't remember. It makes me feel bad. <laughs> That's okay. <laughs> well, thank you. That's very nice of you. <laughs> yeah. And that was totally um, unlike anything you'd ever done, too. Yeah. Yeah, well, we got all of that. Human beings, we got all of those things. We're multidimensional. You know, you've got all of that information somewhere in there. We've lived those lives. That's why they resonate, right? Otherwise, it just wouldn't even, you wouldn't even, it wouldn't even register, mm -hmm. you know, some of the darker stuff, right? <laughs> Do you think that, because uh, one of my signature questions is always asking um, what the darkest headspace is you've had to go over voiceover. Do you think that might be one of them? There was some, there was one that had very, very sexual content, which I think was the one that kind of made me go, okay, that's, that's it for me. And I couldn't kind of, by the time we got to the particular scene, um, we were like six episodes in. So I couldn't very much just go, fuck it, I'm leaving. Mm -hmm. um, uh, so I remember doing this episode and going, Ugh, I, don't, I just don't feel good about this. Um, and, and so, and that's probably whatever that was, it was probably the, the darkest. But I thought um, there was a lot of not grotesque depth to flay yeah like some real some real interesting places to go to like you know um grotesquerie has its place too and i'm not at all judging anybody who has an affinity for it i mean we express ourselves however we do right um but uh yeah uh i think roberta flay and then that other one that I totally have blanked on the name of, which I'm sorry. <laughs> I think that I think that also wasn't Black Lagoon though, because there is a scene near the end um, where Roberta is tricking a guy that she is going to kill into that she's actually attracted to him, and then they, and they start having sex, and then she kills him with a with a, a gun that she has in her belt buckle. Oh, is that right? I think that's probably what you're thinking of too. <laughs> oh, is it okay? Oh, geez. Well, I should look and then I will know. Okay. <laughs> yeah. Do you still find when you've been to conventions, do you um, find a lot of fans talk about a Black Lagoon with you too? Uh, a number of them come uh, come by. Like not as many as obviously My Little Pony yeah. is, the, is the one that everyone comes to get signatures for. Um, but periodically, yeah. And it's very funny when you get a Black Lagoon fan in the middle of the pony fans because <laughs> <laughs> they'll, they'll stick out. <laughs> they will really stick out. There were some people, uh, questions that people had in the Black Lagoon community. Um, yeah. If you didn't play Roberto, do you think you'd want to play Rabbi or is there like another character that you can remember? All of the, all of the female characters were pretty chewy. Mm -hmm. Um even that what was the name of the blonde lady the um 
the bigger blonde lady. Oh, like like a, yeah. Right. Yeah, there was some interesting stuff there too. There's lots of there was lots of interesting stuff in it. Uh, I remember I really loved um, I loved what Brian Drummond did. I loved the, like those a lot of those characters. A lot of the a lot of the other characters too. Yeah. yeah. Who are you? Uh, who are you closest to then? And the whole VL community in Vancouver. Uh, probably Andrea and Ashley because I see them all the time, mm-hmm. and we've been in a lot of a lot of shows together. And I knew Andrea when she was this big. Mm-hmm. This big. <laughs> and um, yeah, I guess and Brian Drummond as well. Mm-hmm. We've been around a lot together. And, Is there a special, because I asked the same question to um, like Kiara and Michael and people like that. Is there a special story memory you have of Kirby? Kirby Morrow? Um, <laughs> well, you've probably seen the ties, right? The, yeah. The, 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 with the ties with Kirby. Um, we were working on a project together. Uh, he had uh, something in the works um a show that uh he and myself and doran bell were going to put together he's just sweet and fun mm-hmm. and um and he and he sort of aged um in an interesting way because he used to be um you know just kind of a hunky tv guy <laughs> um and he always um uh seemed to be having liaisons with um uh, <laughs> with dodgy ladies and uh so i used to like to sing roxanne to him oh. <laughs> i'd see him and i'd go roxanne. <laughs> so anyway uh yeah do you still talk to janice Job? i haven't seen her in absolute eons oh okay um, do you know where she is <laughs> i've talked to her on facebook here and there recently i think that she's still up there oh is that right Oh yeah. gosh. Well, and two, we've all been in our homes as everybody has for two years. So who knows, like a little bit of even less contact than, than you might imagine. Mm. It's too bad. Yeah. Uh, another one that something else that someone asked, um, do you think that Roberta was truly a evil character or was she just hurt inside? You know, I really go back and forth on this. I don't know if there is such a thing as evil, but I do think people get fragmented Mm -hmm. and uh, and so cut off from a bigger part of themselves. And um, I think the wounded do the wounding. Yeah. So, but I don't know if I really ascribe to evil per se. Um. It is a, you know, we do live in a duality. There's dark and there's light, but uh, that's just in this game. You know, that's just how we play our avatars here. And we play them so hard and we think that it's all real. But (laughs) (laughs) And then there, I know you get this a lot with people that were just asking um, what your personal advice is for getting into VO start just start i mean everything is available to you all this technology in your oh my god when i was growing up like the idea of what we have in our cell phones now it's it's a full studio (laughs) like it's it's nuts what's in there um and for years i was actually just doing my auditions on the voice memo in my iphone i literally did not get a home studio or a home microphone until COVID. (laughs) So yeah, I, you know, kind of didn't need it. I was still doing auditions that way. So, and there's YouTube, just put yourself out there. Just get going, get going, learn by doing. Mm -hmm. That's my advice is just do it and then apologize later if you have to, but you don't, (laughs) you know, and watch what you love and chase your obsessions because they're telling you what you like. Mm-hmm. So. And uh, with all the characters that you've played, like the bigger characters that you've had time to uh, grow with 
over years or however long um who do you think that you personally relate the most to what character do i relate the most to <clears throat> uh i very seldom have played a character that's anything like myself um you know except in regard to the fact that we're multi-dimensional so i don't know all of myself but so <laughs> so that could be like some of me yeah. um but uh there's none that's really like i'd go oh yeah that's that's so me uh, like literally none <laughs> <laughs> yeah wow i told you i'm so bad at interviews let me give you a question <laughs> okay here we go uh, okay, what would be your best last meal? You, it's, it's the day before you get executed. <laughs> What's your best last meal? Probably um, lobster grilled cheese. Wow, together? Yeah, there's a it's a restaurant um, locally here. They have a seasonal feature. It's um, like Havarti dill Havarti cheese, um, and then chunks of lobster and like rye bread. It's wow. <laughs> awesome sounds so czech to me i don't know maybe it's just something <laughs> so um who's your favorite person that's alive like a celebrity or i don't know or yeah. it could be your uncle i don't know Jeez. <laughs> uh, i don't know i guess my mom your mom <clears throat> okay who's your favorite dead person uh geez. Well, do you know do you know who Tony Katane is? I know this name, but I don't know who that is exactly. What a great name, too. <laughs> she was, um, I guess she was probably the most well-known for being, um, you know, the band White Snake. <laughs> no. Okay. <laughs> well, anyway, she was, uh, uh, they were like a glam metal, like a hair band. Um, oh, okay. And then she was known, she's probably best known for, she was an actress too, but she was known for being uh, the dancer in a lot of their videos. And um, I interviewed her back in January of 2020 or 2021, and then she died in May. Oh, wow. Yeah. So it's, and we were, we were friends. Like we, we became friends after I interviewed her. So. Oh, yeah. Oh, that's lovely. Yeah. Oh. Wow. <laughs> that's sweet. Yeah. That's sweet. So you had a little soul connection. What's a country you'd most like to travel to? Japan. I haven't been to Japan yet. Oh, is that right? I haven't either. But I have been to Japan, to the airport. It was great. Everybody bought perfume. <laughs> you didn't actually, like, go anywhere else, just the airport? No, we were on our way to Beijing to do a, to do a My Little Pony convention. And we oh, stopped wow. in the airport in Japan. But it was so qualitatively different than... Oh my God, the difference between China and Japan is insane. Like you, it's Asia, yeah. blah, blah. But the, just the, the, the culture is like, oh my goodness. It's, it's literally like, it's just a, a two different planets. It's wild. Mm -hmm. Like as we were taking off, there were three men on the runway and I think they had been servicing the undercarriage of the plane who bowed to the plane <laughs> as, we were, as we were flying off. I was like, my God. <laughs> And they were just like, just so solicitous and, you know, um, um, it's such an interesting culture. It's like so full of, <laughs> of um, uh, what is it, like fetishes. Yeah. Do you know what I mean? Like uh, just sort of like things made special by a type of focus. Right. So I would call it a country of gardens if you if you think of a garden as something that you tend right <laughs> then like anything is a garden a business can be a garden but the way that people deal with life is just like a series of gardens that's yeah. japan that's my assessment from my few hours in an airport in japan bang and then china wow like the place is crazy mm -hmm. it was so crazy um you arrive and you're like just punched right out you know and uh and then 
the roads. I don't understand how people aren't killing each other. Like the traffic is nuts. The lights go and all of a sudden traffic from this way, this way, guys on rickshaws and people in weird, you know, 20 people on a bike with a baby on the head and flowers in the back and the, and the, um, the, uh, 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 electrical stuff, the wires and stuff that run along the side of the road. Have you been to China? No, but I know what you, I know what you mean. Oh, it's nuts. It's just like a tangle of wires. And, uh, and that to me is the, the China metaphor psyche, the workaround. Because everything is replugged and plugged and plugged and, you know, kind of like work around, work around, work around. And we met a, a lady, um, an actress there who had a side business of she would find um, because people were all taking uh, cargo to Canada from China. Yeah. So she would, uh, her business was to find people who didn't have carry on and rent their carry on, pay them for their carry on to take materials into Canada. It's the workaround. Here's the law and here's how we deal with it. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so cool. But it was incredibly safe. And uh, Beijing was like, you, you couldn't get mugged if you tried. Like if you, you know what I mean? Like there's some places where you go in the world and you're just walking along and you're like, I know that I'm about to become felonized <laughs> yeah. and, and there, it's so safe. And the people were actually really, really, really lovely. I don't know why I'm talking about China. You didn't ask, but that's okay. it's cool. Memories. <laughs> yeah. That, that's why, I mean, I'm not like, I'm like 25 miles outside of the Minneapolis area, but it's been really bad there lately with the uh, crime. Is it really? Yeah. Minneapolis, really? Have you, been, have you been here many times? I've been there twice. Okay. I've been there twice. I went to a, a convention there. Was that a while ago? Uh, yeah. I'm not sure what year, to be honest, but it was in the My Little Pony, somewhere in the My Little Pony stretch of things. Okay. 2016, 15, something like that. Well, going back to um, the Japan topic, I did think it was cool that um, you said that your first, uh, like one of the first cartoons that you saw was Marine Boy, which oh, yeah. was anime. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Yes. Yeah. And it was, yeah. And I, was, I loved it. I loved the, you know, big eyed people in the water. Yeah. And I love Marine Boy. I wanted to get with Marine Boy. <laughs> <laughs> I could imagine that um, growing up in South Africa, the things on TV were just crazy, heavily censored. Uh, yes, they were. I mean, we only had TV from six to 10 at night. And uh, so, and one night would be English and the next night would be Afrikaans. And then one night would be English, Afrikaans. And I think a healthy chunk of that was news. Mm -hmm. So, you know, when we got, um led into the into the common room the things that we would see were like little house on the prairie <laughs> <laughs> and yeah yeah the whitest show the whitest show in whiteville <laughs> and uh heidi which was the whitest cartoon mm -hmm. um which was i think originally in german or maybe in dutch i'm not really sure so, yeah and then in Swaziland, like no TV. So I didn't really grow up watching TV. I didn't have a habit of it. Mm -hmm. um, but I was, when, when we came back to Canada, um, friends that had cable, I was like crazy for it. I was like a kid with sugar. I was like, <laughs> <laughs> I want to see more Donnie and Marie Osmond. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Name things, but yeah. And you uh, also wanted to try New York too early on? Uh, my parents thought that was a good idea um, oh, okay. and, and we went and I was like, what, why? <laughs> no, <laughs> no. Uh, yeah. New York was not a, not a me place. It's too jangly mm -hmm. to everybody on top of each other. Well, what do you think um, is the most starstruck you've been with who you've worked alongside of, or do you not get starstruck? Um. I think I just get idiotic um, and brain dead. Uh, <laughs> I met 
William Shatner backstage at a convention and I was trying to say nice to meet you and I said shoo (laughs) (laughs) yeah so um and I got his autograph um from Jim from My Little Pony because he was on our show um and then the lady who was cleaning my houses for me my house for me when I was really busy uh wrote the recipe for bitter melon soup on it and I lost it (laughs) (laughs) okay (laughs) well and this is probably obvious but with uh all the Sondheim musicals that you were part of um did you and Bernadette Peters ever cross paths no we never did okay (laughs) well when I was younger people always used to say that I looked like Bernadette Peters oh I don't know if that's actually true, but that was one of the things that used to be said. Mm-hmm. Life was strange. <laughs> I, I, uh, I'm a great admirer of Bernadette Peters, so. Yeah. And uh, has there been a bucket, <laughs> has there been a, like a bucket list show that you got to do voices for that you got to be part of? I was really, I really loved doing Martha Speaks, and yeah. that's just a, it's a kids show and it's educational. But there were actually really good stories, and um, uh, I love languages as well. So I love playing a character that spoke Spanish. I played the mom as well, and the baby. And so, uh, yeah, you know, it's weird what you like. But, yeah, I really love that one. And um, I want to do some real magic thing, though. <clears throat> That's what I really want to do. Magic, space, kung fu. <laughs> things I like. <laughs> and was that, uh, that doesn't make me think to ask, was it um, difficult to bring acting to Puka or was it just all fun? <laughs> uh, well, Puka, you know, like she doesn't do very much except giggle, but the room was so damn funny. Like everybody else in the room was so freaking funny that that was actually extremely, extremely enjoyable. Shannon Chan Kent. Shannon and I, I believe, have some weird past life with one another. (laughs) (laughs) We are, uh, we satellite each other's lives a little bit. And uh, yeah, I'm just remembering her in that. But anyway. Well, you guys got to be, she was your, she was Fabiola. She was your maid. And right. Well, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. 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 Such a good actress. Uh, yeah. Shannon. And now she's, um, now she's so on strawberry shortcake. Yep. I don't even know if I'm allowed to say this, but I hope they won't see. <laughs> she plays, she's my, she's the singing voice. And she was also the singing voice. I think of, uh, Princess Luna was she? Or? I'm not really sure. Anyway. So, and there's probably been lots of instances where you've gotten to um, perform with yourself. Yes. Is that really easy for you to do too? Uh, it depends on the characters. Um, obviously, the further apart they are, the better. So if I'm playing Rarity or something like that, and then I'm Granny Schmier, that's a very easy shift to do because they don't really sound at all alike. You know, you can just go from one to the other. Um, but if they're a little, little close, you can, you know, you can get accent drift, <laughs> or <laughs> which is a terrible thing. If you have a Scots character and an Irish character, you're hooped. <laughs> <laughs> what about a case where... Um... It's like two different genders, like a little boy and then a mom or something. Oh, easy. E- okay. Easy. Yeah. It's absolutely. Um, how was your day, dear? I don't know. I'm just so okay. But I don't know. Give me some lines. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. I don't, I don't know if there's been a case with, I know it's, I know it's more rare in um, ADR to do that. Um, but is there a case with anime that you can remember where you got to play against yourself? See, those shows are the hardest to remember because you do them by yourself <laughs> and uh, and it's just so focused on words and speak now. Um, stop, start, stop, start. And so it's, you don't really even have, a, I mean, I don't never have a sense of them until after, after, um, even if you, if you go back and watch them, which I don't usually. <laughs> 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 
So I don't know. I do not know. I can't remember one. Okay. I can, yeah, sorry. Okay. <laughs> did you watch um, Black Lagoon? Yeah, I did. I watched it. Um, but I don't really remember it. Like, it's a long time ago now. Mm-hmm. Yeah. That's a show. Is it 15 years? Yeah. Right. 15 years ago? So 15 years ago, watched it once uh, kind of thing. Um, yeah. yeah. It is It is getting a recent rediscovery, though, with the new generation of fans. Um, I think probably just because of how uh, sweary the dub is. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, yeah. Well, we were quite thrilled with swearing, um, swearing our faces off. Uh, and I did enjoy it. And I'm a pretty sweary person myself. Okay. Although I'm able to not be a sweary person, you know, if there's a child in the room, I can restrain myself, but I'm pretty sweary, mm-hmm. uh, just fucking generally, <laughs> and, uh, you know, so um, I probably should have warned you. Am I allowed to swear on wherever this is? Yeah, it's fine. But, you know, if you do a lot of little kids cartoons, I mean, it just happens. You start, it's almost like you, you start to build a, do- a Jekyll and Hyde-ness, right? Mm-hmm. And, and it's awful because in the middle of little kid cartoons, you know, when the, when the, when the, when we're not recording, everybody's at their absolute worst. Mm-hmm. They always are. They're always at their sweariest. <laughs> we're <laughs> always the cheekiest, naughtiest cows. Anyway. <laughs> what's some of the, what's some of the most um, recent things that you're part of that you can safely talk about at least? Um, well, last year, a cartoon called Zenko Go came out which is on Netflix and uh, Angry Birds Summer Madness. Okay. You know, that's on Netflix as well. So those are the most uh, recent um, Strawberry Shortcake, which I think the shorts are uh, online kind of thing. Um, do, 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 do. What else? So those are very recent. There hasn't been like a ton of uh, anime recently because they have went in the last years, uh, they started to do mostly non-union work. Yeah. So, um, so we kind of there was a big sea change at a certain point in time. Mm-hmm. But we we rescued James Corrigal from anime because he's too good of a director. <laughs> <laughs> you can make anyone sound perfect. So, so you didn't have to be a professional actor. So there's your answer. Just find James Corrigal and you will become an actor. Even if you haven't, if you've got a tin ear <laughs> <laughs> and you live under a rock, James Corrigal can make you a good actor. In LA, that, that was actually uh, what you were just talking about too. Uh, there's a big thing right now where they're trying to make all of the um, anime dubs be union because the only ones, only certain ones are. And um, so many people work in it in LA and in Texas that uh and a lot of people that are like around my age and it's um the waiters are just like awful like the the per hour rates for dubbing um yeah. unless it's something that's like on Netflix probably for the quality I don't know would it be good for the quality do you think do you think can you tell the difference when you see the actors that are professionals and the ones that are not mm, I mean I've I've talked to a handful of uh recently too i've talked to a handful of more new people in um like the voiceover scene and i think it just it depends a lot on the on who the director is yeah yeah if you get james corrigal literally bled from a stone it's astonishing mm-hmm. that's why we had to that's why we had to like take him away from ocean studios <laughs> yeah um but i you know doing my little pony um, the fan community was massive, obviously, and there were a lot of uh, actors, like tons, and some of them were just amazing, like amazing, like better than ninety percent of the people that I work with. And I and it would just there was this chick, uh, Ellie, hmm, she was English, um, just amazing like she could just she could do imitation my voice kind of better than my voice and also sing and uh uh, every character every single one of us she could do and then there's black griffin you you know who 
Black yeah. Griffin is. Yeah, I mean, he's nuts. Like, he's just so talented, ridiculous. And there, you know, there are a number of people that were just off the charts, uh, talented and non-union. And you're like, I don't understand why you don't own the world. Mm-hmm. <laughs> but they will. Yeah. They will. It's a matter of time. And it's all shifted anyway. Like right now, we're in the, the middle of the sea change and nobody who is nothing is working exactly as it was working before it's, we're not where we are going and we're not where we were so um yeah so it's kind of an open field now yeah basically so that's great do you still in terms of directors do you still work with um terry and carl often uh <clears throat> i mean i have in the last two years terry directed um uh angry birds mm-hmm. um nicole oliver is doing a ton a ton a ton of directing now yeah so she shifted in the last two years like you probably know into mostly directing stuff she's very very good so yeah i mean i do see them but uh, but carl is carl is uh at ocean and yeah. you know so we don't do that all that much um anime anymore so mm-hmm. Unless it all turns to be um, union, then mm. that'd be great. Because yeah. Carl's a hoot. <laughs> he has some of the best uh, directing expressions. Um, uh, you know, insincere flattery. He mm. has brilliant insincere flattery. Well, my final question is always asking him, um, what do you want your legacy to be? Uh, <clears throat> uh, hundreds of cats. <laughs> uh hundreds of cats uh, uh mass ascension end of war knowledge of how to make sauerkraut in every household in america and canada <laughs> <laughs> yeah and uh anyone of any color and any sex playing anyone of any color and any sex mm. that that would be it what about is there something that you want people to take away from your performances i just want people to enjoy themselves and if they're not then to turn the channel and do something else Mm -hmm. (laughs) i actually do have a story about um i haven't told it for a while but um when i was in fourth grade um me and my family were out to eat normally just like a regular Friday night and then we were about to leave and then they told everybody that uh, nobody can leave and they um, wouldn't say why at first and then uh, like a few minutes later heavily armed SWAT SWAT policemen come in and turn all the lights off and tell everybody that they have to go into two the go into the two bathrooms because there was a guy who shot two people and um he crashed his car outside the restaurant and he was trying to get inside the restaurant. So all of us had to stay in the, the restaurant for five or six hours um, until probably 1 a.m. And then we were all individually escorted to our cars. And with how young I was at that time, I know that I wouldn't have uh, been able to get over it unless I was um, continually consuming the anime that I was watching at the time. So I just wanted to say thanks for being part of that wow you think that helped yeah it just kind of uh because it fictionalized it it made it distant from reality mm-hmm. interesting holy crap i would never have thought of that mm-hmm. that is astonishing yeah well good good i'm glad you know just you never know you never know what's uh what somebody's gonna get out of something very very interesting mm-hmm. Wow. <laughs> well, I'm sorry you went through that, though. Oh. Although it was probably something necessary. Who knows? Yeah, I guess looking back on it, because of course, when you're that young, you don't expect to go through anything like that. So, were you very scared? Yeah, I mean, I was like nine. So, I guess when, when something like that happens, you think that, you know, the world's going to end so right yeah yeah wow well wow who knows that's really really interesting Mm -hmm. it's really interesting my god
Yeah. I, yeah. I mean, yeah. I, I, this is why I like to, I mean, I, um, you know, even with the, the, the weird sexual stuff that makes me feel deeply uncomfortable, I, I know that for some people, it's actually probably a very safe way to experience a, um, an unlocking of, you know, you know, stuff that's stuck in their cells that they kind of can't access, um, you know, particularly, I don't know, people who, who are, um, you know, trapped with televisions when they're, when they're kids, right? And then just sort of like um, no way of expressing things and people who've been assaulted. And I don't want to get too deep into it because that's not what you're here for. <laughs> but, you know, but it, it, you don't know why or how um, something, is, something is and why something appeals to someone. So there's no point in judging it. I just know when, for me, it's a, mm -mm, that's, that's just my business and that's how I'm at, you know, how I'm with it. Well, I don't even know if you're aware, but there's still a, there's a like huge general consensus fan following that uh, your performance in Black Lagoon is one of the best in English anime dubs, like period. Holy cow. <laughs> <laughs> that's very, very nice. Yeah. I didn't know what to say to that, but it's very, very nice. <laughs> and it has, fuck, nothing to do with me as well right you know like it's just it's the page you just show up and you say the thing and it's people and it's a whole cathexis of the animation and the everything around you and you just play a part mm -hmm. just like life on earth i do think too that uh for me um just anime in general certain series helps play a part in discovering and being comfortable with them um, being gay for me. Awesome. Yeah. <laughs> and, uh, but there were probably not a lot of reflections of gay characters, right? Well, no, well, at least stuff that was aired on TV. Um, like I know in one of the instances with one of the later seasons of Sailor Moon, when it was on Cartoon Network, they made one of the, a male villain who was gay. They, they, they completely changed it into a woman and they gave him a, a female voice actress. Right. But uh, as I, you know, started watching stuff outside of television back then, um, yeah, like it, it helped a lot to make me comfortable with myself. Awesome. Mm -hmm. That's so awesome. Well, <laughs> yay. <I'm laughs> I don't know how it happens, but it's magic. Yeah. Right. Mm -hmm. Wow. The gospel according to cartoons. Mm -hmm. You can find truth literally anywhere. Yeah. Yeah. Those are something that you want to say to the um, Black Lagoon community. I apologize for being me. <laughs> <laughs> and I thank you for being you. And um, thanks for liking the show. And I hope I haven't destroyed it for you. <laughs> um, yeah. And tip your waitress. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Thank you. Thank you. Nice to meet you. Yeah, you as well. <laughs> Take care. <laughs> Bye.